Hi. Hey, everyone. What's up? How you doing? Welcome to a uh, replay analysis. Today, we have a special game for you. We got a Zerg versus Terran. But you haven't seen that before, have you? We also got a guy named Hostility. This is probably one of the most appropriate names for a Terran player. Because they always fucking attack you every five seconds. And the subject today that we're going to be looking at is Van Buren. Van Buren. And if you've never seen a replay analysis before, if you don't know how if you don't know how this works, essentially what it is, is I'm going to ridicule this guy and belittle him and make him feel sad. And he paid for it. It's basically the StarCraft version of me wearing a stiletto stomping on someone's nuts. Okay, I'm just joking. Got a little weird there. It's actually... <laughs> it's actually just, uh, you know, me telling the person how to play better. Essentially, okay? So, if you haven't exited the video by now, it means you're ready to learn. <laughs> Welcome to Replay Analysis. Alright, so, Van Buren, how you doing, man? Let's see what you're up to. Let's see what you got going on in... Fucking ZVT. What are you doing? Hmm. <laughs> the only thing you could do better is you could grab one of these drones off one of these two far patches and put them on this nice juicy close patch right there. Otherwise your build's fine. So far? You haven't Taking fucked up notes. yet. Step one by stilettos. Mm hmm Buy those stilettos, dude. Thank you for, uh, very much, Top Fencer, for the 510 bits. Much love, dude. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> also, okay, so, two mistakes now, I would say. Stack your close patches, and when you make... <coughs> you're going for a 17 hatch, as which I can clearly see, because you rallied the 17th drone there. This is a mistake. When you go for a 17 hatch, you should be rallying one of your 15 or 16 drones, the eggs that start, the two that start together right after the overlord spawns, click one of them and tell them to go to your natural. The reason why this is, is because if you 17 hatch now, with that drone and the egg, you are not going to be throwing a hatchery down until about 350 minerals, or maybe 360. It's going to be really late. Uh, your hatchery is going to be delayed by probably like three seconds or four seconds. Probably like three seconds. It's unnecessary to make it that. And now you're going for an 18 hatch. So your money might not be as high now. But now you're going for an 18 hatch. And this is getting on the extreme late realm here of time. So. And the reason why this is important. The reason why a... I would say a 16 hatch is still okay against Terran. But a 17 hatch is, I would say, the most appropriate. 18 is getting a little bit extreme on the ridiculous side of greed. The reason why this is important is because of proxy racks. And if there are proxy racks really close to your base, like, let's say this dude is proxying racks like right fucking there, for instance. Let's just say hypothetically he's proxying two racks right there. He could actually rally marines out of those barracks. And if you went for a 17 hatch, okay, a 17 hatch, your hatchery would be probably like 75% of the way done by the time a marine would start shooting your hatchery. And there'd already be a bunker started by the time your hatchery would be like 60% of the way done if you went for a 17 hatch. So if you go for an 18 hatch, you might as well take those percents and take them down by like five each. So the marines would start shooting it by like 70% and the bunker would probably start by 5% less than the previous thing I said, like fucking like 50, 45-ish. The point I'm trying to make here is, is it's harder to defend all ends for multiple reasons for that for if that happens to you because if the hatchery's not done you don't get creep number one which is the mobility of your slow ass units all, everything but a drone essentially number two the faster you get creep out in your base the easier it is to stop the bunker from going down because if you can deny the bunker initially with drones if it comes to that like you have let's say you have 10 drones and there's only like two marines and you're killing the bunker and you're overpowering the marines at the same time if you actually kill the bunker and make him cancel it and the creep now spreads further faster he can't rebuild it there and the bunker gets pushed further and further out which makes it easier to defend yourself for an all-in another reason is is you can start spines if you really have to really fast another reason is is you can start a queen which is super fucking effective at defending these things it, again it just there's so many reasons why it makes defending all-ins super effective okay 
17 hatch is, I would say, the maximum level of greed you should go to. 18 hatch is not the end of the world. I'm not going to be like, well, you fucking lost. All, it's, all it does, though, is it makes it just even that much harder to defend all ins. Realistically, if you were if you knew your opponent was prone to always fucking like all inning you and you're like, oh, I know this guy. He always proxy T-Rexes me. Going for a 16 hatch, if you're going to go hatchery first, would be great. You could even go pool first, but you don't have to go pool first. This is Diamond League. We don't have to get too technical. Going hatchery first, but like a 16 hatch would be great against someone who you know would be aggressive. And if you're really afraid of aggression, if you feel like aggression is your weak point, 16 hatch would be totally good there against, you know, helping you get further ahead against aggression because you just have your hatchery done way faster. Like if you went for a 16 hatch instead of an 18 hatch, your hatchery would be done probably eight seconds faster. It's a substantial difference. If you think about how much eight seconds represents and 71 seconds of a build time, that's a lot. Um, and yeah, otherwise your build's fine. It's just super greed. It's just, I want to make sure you understand that concept. So if you ever find yourself struggling against all ins, stop going 18 hatch. If that's your standard, it's going to make your life harder. And you should be going 17 by default. 17 should be your default. Honestly, not 18 in my opinion. It's just, it's the safest of, it's like good greed and it's also good, it's like the, still relatively safe. 18 is getting a bit on the greed side. Like 17 is already a little bit on the greedy side. 18 is really on the greedy side is essentially what that means. But your order of your build is totally fine. You went hatch cast pool. Uh... I'm going to pause it one more time and say this. You're, I don't mind what you just did. I think you missed a drone, though, for a minute. I, I, I got to see this. I, I want to see how light you missed your drone, just in general. I'm very curious. Do you miss a drone at all? I don't think you do. No, you kind of do a little bit. Yeah, you do. Okay, it felt like it kind of felt like you did it initially because, uh, like the I I actually prefer you to stack the uh, mineral line constantly. I actually think that's nice. I think you should keep doing that, and you should fill up your gas after. However, you got to be really careful about your larvae, right, and not let it sit for too long because that's two drones twice in a row that you let sit there for like probably seven seconds when the larva was there, and those drones are super important because they're your gas drones. And again, once again, the one glaring weakness I can see in your build, if I, if like I was playing against you or someone else was playing against you, that's, let's just say a little bit above, like that's going to push you to a higher level. Mist like those mistakes that you just made, you would die if someone was super aggressive. Like if someone was proxy raxing you, you would have speed later now, which would make it hard to deal with. And if somebody was going for, um... Uh, like, pro let's say, like, three racks Reaper or some shit. Again, this would be hard to deal with because your speed is going to be super late because you delayed your drones a bit too hard. So just be very careful about making sure you're spinning that larva, like, immediately, immediately, immediately. How is that seven seconds? Because I'm on times two. Watch, th watch this. Watch. Legit. Look at this, okay? Your, dro your larva spawns at 107. Okay, 110. three on that one and larva spawns at 117 okay 117 and 124 that's seven seconds that that one was seven seconds delayed right there and again this is your gas drone like that's a fucking huge delay of your gas. Uh, it, it's substantial. And if you fucking got all in right now, you would get sh sh like fucking shit on by someone who has good control. You can't do stuff like that in early. Like you have to really avoid little, like cause there's no reason to make that mistake. There's nothing going on right now. All And your larva is sitting there again uh, for your next, or like your overlord, or, which honestly it should be a drone again because you should be going to a third base with a drone. But... What this makes me feel like is it makes me feel like you are not doing 
5 SD, 5 SD, 5 SD, 5 SD, or 4 SD, 4 SD, 4 SD, 4 SD. You're not, you just don't roll your fingers on making larva. Because if you did, there would, your larva would never be like sitting like that. Uh, so that's, that's something I would, t oh, I would highly recommend you start doing. Because letting your larva sit there is just fucking, some larva aren't as impactful as others. It is true. As long as you never larva cap, that is the big one. But these larva that you're making for your gas are critical right now. They're super important because it sets the pace for control of the game. And now your control is just delayed for no reason. And when your control is delayed, it creates openings where you could die. And this one should be a... Let's see how that larva is delayed again. Like, so that was your... All three larva for your gas were delayed. So we, we did the seven second one, right? This was the seven second delayed one from 127. It was at 17, or 117 to 124 was when you started it. Now look at your next larva. 128, it spawns. 129. 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136. This is your third drone for your gas. Every, your first drone was delayed by like three seconds. Your second drone was delayed by seven seconds. And this drone was delayed by nine seconds because, or eight, sorry, eight seconds because it spawned at 128. So all together, that's three, seven, eight. That's uh, 18 seconds. 18 fucking seconds of no gas being mined. And 18 seconds of gas being mined is, if you think about it, like, look at this. Just just watch one, one trip of the drone, okay? Watch this. As soon as this drone touches the hatchery, well, 128. So from 128, how long does it take the drone to go in and out? 128 to 132. So he mines one gas a second because he mines roughly four gas every four seconds because he gets... Well, each gas turn in is worth four and uh, each gas turn in is worth four and fucking it took him four seconds to do it. So 18 sec 18 gas you're behind now because you're 18 seconds behind. So now let's look and see when your speed could have started. We'll just speed it up really fast. So we'll go to uh, 82 gas essentially. Your, gas your speed could be started right now. At 208 your speed could be started. At 208. Just because you made larva efficiently. It's all it would be if you made larva the second they spawned because you're because again nothing's happening right now and you could just be going 5st 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 larva 5st 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 larva and 208 uh so what's 18 seconds after 208 that's uh 226 or wait what did i just say Uh, you, yeah, no, you get the point. Though. It's 18 gas, and you're mining it faster now, so because you have three on it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like the, the the point is, is the seconds were missed, so it's just it would just be faster, essentially. And the the next one that's happening again is your speed could be started, and you have enough gas, and you're still mining with three on gas, and you're not taking drones off gas, and you're not starting speed, and you're also not starting a third base. Uh, or you are, but your, your drone's headed there. So there's a few problems with your build right now. There's a few problems with your build right now. I thought I was, I literally thought I was doing this as fast as possible, but you have to realize if you don't maximize the larva, like you understand that concept though, right? If you don't maximize the larva, you're definitely not doing it as fast as possible. Doing it as fast as possible would mean you're making the drones immediately. Also, here's a tip. This is a big tip for every Zerg player out there, okay? This is a huge tip. When you make a third base, do not do what you just did. And here's... I'll tell you why. I'll explain it. So watch this drone. Check this out. <coughs> See when you start it. Okay, you're, you're doing it half right, I would say. I like that you're... I thought, honestly, for a second, I thought you were just mining minerals, and then you just said, go build the fucking hatchery. You do build it pretty far out, though. But look at this. This is the point I'm trying to make here. You have 25 minerals. A second ago, you had 325. You have two larvae sitting in your bank right now. This is a form of inefficiency. 
This drone has just tied up 300 minerals out of your bank account. And it's not going to actually, it's just holding it. Like it's on reserve, right? It's holding it for the next probably five seconds until it actually gets here and builds the hatchery. And you have another expense that needs to be made for a hundred minerals that you're not making, which is the two larvae. And this expense, if you spend it on the larva, is going to generate you more money faster for the future. So what you should be doing is you should be running the drone to the fucking location and spending all your larva the whole time. And then as you arrive, then spend it. Because also, here's the thing. I bet you're going to get up to 100 minerals by the time you get here, unless you spend some of it by then later. But the point I'm trying to make is... is you have enough money to make still make this hatchery as the drone arrives and spin these two larvae. You could have 400 minerals by the time the drone gets here. But instead, what you're doing is you're tying up 300 and leaving two larvae sitting there, which is just making those drones take longer to spawn then. And it, may, it means that they're going to mine slower because they're not going to be alive for as long. Like, they're, they're going to be alive seconds later, which is going to just make you make more money or make less money at a slower rate for a little bit. Is like you look at your money. You could have a hundred. See what I mean? Like, you just made something. You made one egg of something. You made one drone. Okay, good. But you had four hundred minerals, four hundred and five minerals by the time you got here, and now you can make the hatchery. Like you don't have to. You don't have to build the hatchery to make the drone come here. But tying up your minerals is all it's doing is slowing your larva usage down. So it's just not efficient to build buildings from super far away. When you have larva cost that you needs to be spent on first, because again, larva is always the priority. So that seems like it's not a big deal, but that kind of shit adds up. So like your gas inefficiency and now your larva inefficiency, this shit adds up, and you're still mining gas. I don't know what you're gonna do with this, but we'll see in a second. Also. Highly recommend you make a creep tumor first instead of an inject. Okay, so you injected. So just keep in mind too. Two base injects only makes sense for Zerg for two things. It only makes sense if you're going to go for a two base tech build. Or if you're going to go for a timing attack. Like you're going to do something with like Zerglings, Banelings, or Roaches. Like you're going to just be aggressive. And here's why. If you double inject your bases and you have the purpose of going, I'm just going to make drones, <clears throat> you will never have creep that can actually protect your third base and you will never have the ability to protect your drones on your third base, which will indirectly make your droning slower because you could actually saturate your third base safely really fast if you have creep that can make your queens go back and forth between both bases. If you don't have queens that can do this, it forces you to either not saturate the third base at all because your drones would just die then, or because what's going to cover them if there's no creep connecting your bases, or it would make you have to make more zerglings or some, whatever tech choice you've chosen to make. Like if you have a roach warren, it would make you have to make more of those to then circumvent the fact that you have no creep and just hopefully surround and kill or whatever, or zone if it's roach because they're, fa they're, they're a little bit faster than queens off creep, so they can still deal with it off creep. You know what I mean? Like, you can't actually properly saturate your third now if you go double inject. If your plan is to make drones. So you should always be going tumor first from the natural towards the third. And you're still mining gas. This gas is fucking you so bad. Look at your larva right now. Like, this shit is unacceptable. You have so much larva sitting there and you're about to have an inject pop off. You gotta definitely rip off your drones a lot faster than that. You should be ripping... Like, I'm not even kidding. You should be ripping your drones off the gas. I Like, if you confirm that there's a natural with your overlord, and you're like, oh, cool. This guy has zero proxy racks or multi-racks opener. There is no massive reaper uh, pressure. There is no proxy marine pressure with bunker rush. There is no pressure from the Terran. He's, not, he's going for a defensive expansion to open the game up with, like a Reaper... Ex one bat, one Rax Reaper Expand. Make sure you understand the difference of Reaper Expand to Mass Reaper. The difference is one Barracks... like the, the, It would be Depot, Rax, Command Center with one Reaper, and that's it. That's a Reaper Expand. 
Mass Reaper is Depot, Barracks, Barracks, Barracks. Like fucking nine Reapers by two or by like four minutes or three and a half minutes. Because he's just cranking Reapers like nonstop out of triple racks. And he never makes a command center until after he already makes all of his barracks that he's going to rush you with. And then if he like wants to macro out of it, then he can do that. And make the command center like at five minutes or something. Or four minutes. Not two minutes. Or 130 or some shit. So, again, the point I, ju I just wanted to make sure you understand, just to clarify. If you know your opponent is going to expand, and let's say your overlord sees defensive play from your opponent like this, the bunker doesn't mean defensive play. The command center does. The bunker is just reinforcing defensive play. But if you spot, oh, he's got a command center, and let's say your gas is at like 80 gas out of 100, you could rip off gas then. It doesn't have to be exactly at 100, because then there is no super priority for zergling speed. There is only a massive priority for Zergling Speed to get it the, as fast as fucking possible if it's a heavy barracks pressure build. Otherwise, you can gradually get it, and it's okay. I'm not saying don't get it when you have 100 gas. I'm not saying, oh, just don't get Zergling Speed until 4 minutes, fuck it. No, obviously, you still have to get it. But you don't have to, like, rush your gas up to it, is what I'm saying. If Once you see a command center, you could, you could just gradually go into it. Like, you could... If it takes you an extra 10 seconds because you ripped off your gas at 80... You could eventually get to 100 and then start speed and then you're good to go still. You'd be fine because Hellions are not going to come for a while and you should be making Queens anyways if you're going to go for a third base like this. And Queens are what should be denying the Hellions regardless. Uh, so just keep in mind, ripping your drones off gas is very important. That's the big point I'm trying to make here. If you just leave them on gas and just mine an extra 156 until you rip them off, that is so fucking late. And look again, look at your money. You have 375 minerals. Okay. And you have 11 larva. 11 larva is 550 minerals worth of drones. You could spend 7 out of that 11 larva, which is still not good. And all keep in mind too, I could I again this the game furthermore tells me you're not doing foresty, 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 because you can't, you can, this is, you cannot do this. You cannot ever let your larva stack this high. You can't do that. If you do that, that's going to hold you back pretty hard. Because here's the crazy thing, okay? Remember how I told you the gas when you're like, seven seconds? I thought I did it instantly. If I were to tell you how much time on the minerals, if I had to guess, okay, I'm, I'm, we, could, we could literally add it up, which would take a while, but if I had to guess right now how much time you're behind, and this is, this, I want you to understand the concept here before I give you the, the number to make it make sense. If you have a hatchery that spawns a larva once every 10 seconds, which is pretty much accurate, that's pretty, about what it goes like in StarCraft 2. It's about once every 10 seconds, a larva goes out of the hatchery, automated larva spawning. And then every 29 seconds, we can, we, we can just round it off to every 30 seconds, just to make it easy for math. Uh, a larva will inject, will spawn a larva every 30 seconds, and it will spawn three larvae all at once. So what this means is, is this means that automated larva is spawning, and larva injects from the queen are both, if done perfectly, they're both 50% of your larva. However... Automated larva spawning is superior only because, if you have to take one or the other, only because you can get it one-third at a time, one-third at a time, one-third at a time. It doesn't have to be waiting, waiting, all three. And in that one-third, 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 you could have a drone uptime. You can start a drone at 30 seconds before it's done. You can start a drone at 20 seconds before it's done. And you can start a drone at 10 seconds before it's done. Because you could start it like, or, or if let's say your last drone just got made right as you started the inject. So now you can make a drone 20 seconds before it's done. You can make a drone 10 seconds before it's done. And you can make a drone right as your larva injects finished and all three get made too of the other one. Those drones that get made early, they have uptime faster than the others. So just to make it easy, we'll say both start at zero. Right as you, right as you do your inject, you have no larva sitting there for the automated larva. But then 10 seconds into the inject, one larva spawns. You make a drone. 20 seconds into the larva inject, 
a second larva is generated. You make a drone. 30 seconds in the larva inject. All three larvae spawn off of the hatchery for the inject. And your final fourth larva that from that exact moment, which is your third from the automated, it spawns too. So all four larvae that spawned when the inject happened, that's one out of three out of your automated larva and three out of three out of your inject. All of those at 30 seconds in take 12 seconds to make, right? But if you think about the first and the second larva, you have 10 seconds in, larva gets made. It takes 12 seconds for a drone to finish. So that drone starts mining at 22 seconds in the game. So remember 22, okay? We'll just write that down right now. 22. Uh, you have now another larva that spawns at 20 seconds in that gets made. And that larva spawns at 32 seconds in. And then all the final larvas they, they generate at, at 30 seconds in, which means they're not done until 42 seconds. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that you could have a drone. The first drone out of three could be mining for 20 seconds before the larva inject. And the second drone could be mining for 10 seconds before the larva inject spawns. So that means you could have 30 more minerals per inject cycle if you actually spend your larva on your automated larva. Bonus. B fucking bonus. And that's per hatchery. That's the kind of shit that you should be aiming for. Which means you won't have 11 larvae sitting on your hatcheries. You're, you're just letting all your larvae sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. And then you make it all in a wave. And then you sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. And you make it in a wave. Like, you're not just making it rapidly enough. Oh, Long story short. Yeah. You know, too sketchy. Thank you very much for the four months. Thank you, dude. Wow. 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 Long story short. If you don't spend your larva... It's bad. Okay, anyone who's like, Vibe, I don't understand what you're saying. Spend your fucking larva. Like, spend it as soon as you have it. That's better than waiting on it. So many reasons why. <clears throat> and if you don't spend your larva, it's going to suck. It's going to, uh, it's gonna, it's just gonna be painful for your, your overall build. It's gonna slow you down a lot. <laughs> and yeah, there's nothing going on with the gas as well, so there's no reason to mine that much gas. Just look at that larva again, dude. Ten fucking larva. You are capped on the main. You are capped on the natural. And you are about to be capped on the third. This is... I'm telling you right now... You are struggling in your matchups because of your larva. I can't like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Let me say this. I want to not yell at you. <laughs> um, you're not making me mad or anything. I just want to not make it sound like I'm yelling at you <laughs> because I'm gonna stress on it a lot. You could tell me, vibe. I have 50 problems in StarCraft 2. How do I fix all 50 problems? And I would say, I would watch this and I would say, you have one problem. Your larva sucks dick. And if you fix that, all your other problems will disappear. Because this problem is the one that creates a bad efficiency game for you, which is automatically a bad game then. Like you, you can't really recover from shitty larva usage. You make shit in waves way too much. You really need to develop a habit of rotating your fingers on the keyboard. Like, just literally roll your fingers on SD, 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 SD. You don't have to do it all game either. You just have to do it for the first part of the game, the developing stage of the game. Every game. Like, the first six to seven minutes. Every time, if you're going to macro. You have to do it. Just watch your larva again. Watch your larva again. Okay, just look at this. I know your injects are spawning, but let's see how long it takes you to spin their shit. So you inject... You have four again. You have one. And you have one. You have nine. You have 11, 12, 10. Now your supply blocked. So... And your, your, your overlord's about to spawn. 
he made another one, which is fine. But it, it's just like uh, your macro cycles are just very slow. Like if if you were to think about it, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this to you in the sense of like in the sense of like a car. Like, think about a car. Where like the way a, a car should operate, let's say like it's an automatic car, okay? I want to make an analogy here. I want I want this to make sense. Think about a car that has automatic engine where you turn the car on and you, you know, take the brake off, you put it in drive, and you just start hitting the gas pedal, and the car is like it like shifts for you. It has it it flows, it shifts gears, and as you slow down, it shifts gears back down, and it goes back down to a stop. Gear shifts are like your overlords, and s speed fluctuations are like the consistency of your droning, okay? And what's happening to you is your car has these, like, moments where even though the gears aren't shifting, uh, like, we're, we're not even talking about gears yet. The, the, the engine has this thing where, like, let's just say it, like, loses control. Like, it turns off for two seconds, it turns back on again, it turns off for a couple seconds, it turns back on again. So it's like... <laughs> Like, it's just like, it sounds like the car is fucking dying, just trying to, like, move down the street. And the reason why that is, is because there's, like, no gas pedal consistency to your build. It's, there's no flow to your build, because you're not actually going SD, 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 SD. Like, hitting 4 SD is like holding a gas pedal down in a car. You might as well be, like, hitting the pedal half the time and, like, letting go, and hitting the pedal and letting go, and hitting the pedal and letting go. Like, let's say the speed limit is, like, 45 miles an hour, and you're doing, like, 12 miles an hour, and then you let go of the gas pedal. And then you hit it again for two seconds, you let go again. And then you fucking floor it for three seconds, because you just spent all your larva from an inject, and you sped up all the way to fucking, like, 75 in a 45 zone, and you let go again. And then it goes back down to fucking, like, 12 miles an hour again. Like, you have such stutter in your fucking build, where you have these moments of speed, and then it stutters down again, because you just wait until you have double-digit larva counts, and then you spin it all, and then you just don't do it again for a while. It's so fucking, like, bumpy, essentially. It just doesn't make any sense. So it's like, and when you don't do anything, it's almost like your car is, like, breaking down and just coming to a stop. It needs to fucking flow. So and the way you make it flow is... Five, like you don't even look at your larva you, I don't even want you to look at your fucking larva anyone who thinks when I tell you to hit 5SD I'm not telling you to fucking stare at the hatchery and go where's the larva at no it's so easy that you don't even have to look at it you know what you should be looking at there that's what you should be looking at your fucking supply you know what else you should be looking at your money so that you can make a, a educated guess as to like when you're ready to do shit and you're, like your supply and your money tell you everything. It's like, well, I'm ready to expand now. I'm ready to make another queen now because I have I, I'm hitting five SD and nothing's happening here, so I can, you know, make another inject. And you can also look in the middle of the screen at things like w getting ready for your next inject. That's fine. You can be like, well, my inject's gonna pop off in about seven seconds, or if it's like closer. Obviously, this is more like twenty seconds away because it's only about a third of the way done, but. You get my point. Like, your eyes should not be fixated here. This should be automated. This is like breathing. Your larva itself is literally fucking breathing. You should be doing this automatically without even thinking about it. Which is 4SD. For you, it's 4SD, 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 4SD. And you're just doing it. Grab your overlord, move it over here, 4SD. 4SD, 4SD. Grab a servant, move it over here, 4SD, 4SD, 4SD. Grab a fucking queen, make a group timer, 4SD. It's like your rotational task. It's just what your hands do when you're doing nothing. And you don't actually think to yourself, I gotta hit drones. I gotta hit drones. I gotta hit drones. No, you just look at your build and you, you only think about things that interweave with drones. And whenever you're waiting for the next one to happen, you're, you're like, <sighs> drones, 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 drones. You're just making fucking drones. Like it, you're not even using your brain to do it. It's just a subconscious thing where you're just droning your ass off. That's that's the level of how repetitive this has to be for you. It's like breathing fucking drones. It's like a breathing fucking routine. Because it should be automated. And the reason why it's not automated for you is because you just don't do it. And this is the problem. And this is also, by the way, 
uh, Van Buren, I, I don't want you to feel bad about this because this is not just you. This is most people. There is so many fucking Zerg players out there that just do, fucking don't spin their larva. They just wait until they have like this where you're, you may not realize it, but you're missing so fucking much. You're missing so many larva, not because you're just like not building these, but because they're sitting here capping your larva out. And this is per hatchery. So like if, if you just, if you're like vibe, who fucking cares? It was only like nine seconds where I was capped out. It's like, well, that's nine seconds, nine seconds, nine seconds. That's three fucking larva pretty much that you just missed out on. That's a full, you might as well have not injected a hatchery then. You know what I mean? Like, cause that is what it is. It injects three larva. So it'd be like, well, next time you inject, why don't you just say, you know what? Fuck it. I'll inject my main and natural. Now I'm not going to inject my third because who cares, right? It's the same thing. It's it losing larva like this fucking sucks. Like you can't do it. And it slows you like any Zerg player who does this. It just slows you down like crazy. It's like you're stuck in the fucking mud going nowhere. It is very, very, very slow. I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I'll read it in a second. And uh, I'll just I'll just explain the last part. Uh, but yeah, like you should be looking at your supply constantly and you should be thinking to yourself. You should have an understanding like this. Okay. And this is what the understanding should be. If I were to ask you, how much larva can you generate in 30 seconds of a hatchery? And the answer is six. You don't have to answer these exactly yourself. I'll answer it for you. But I want you to think about these things. How much larva does one hatchery generate every 30 seconds? If you're spinning your larva properly, it's, it's six. Now, how much does a queen cost in supply? It costs two. So if I'm making drones and queens right now, or zerglings and queens, which all, drones and zerglings cost the same supply, what does that mean? It means every inject cycle, I will supply block if I don't make an overlord per hatchery, if that's what your plan is, which is drones and queens and overlords. So every time you have a base injected, you should be planning on probably needing another overlord. That's very realistic. So now if we have two bases, now if we have three bases, we're multiplying this by... This is where it kind of gets a little bit weird. You now have 18 larva, 6, 12, 18 larva, because each base is 6. So 18 larva every 30 seconds. That's 18 fucking supply if we made all drones. Obviously, you're not going to be able to make all drones. You're going to have to squeeze some overlords in there. Maybe two or three overlords in there too. So now that's either 15 or 16 drones. <coughs> but do you know how much supply an overlord gives? If you don't, if someone doesn't know that, you should definitely know that. It's 8. So if I'm making 15 or 16 larva every fucking uh, 30 seconds on my hatcheries just in drones, it means I should always be trying to aim for probably a 20-ish supply cushion just so I can make sure I'm not fucking a supply, gonna supply block. So once you get to the point where you're like here now, when you're like at three base saturation, you should always be trying to stay and just you can quickly just glance at it and be like this. All right, I'm at 58 supply. And let's say your, your total uh, supply was... Uh, we could go up to 66 and then into 72 or uh, sorry, 74 and then 82 or some shit. Let's say your total supply was at like 66. Well, definitely. I'd be like, probably make like two more overlords. Let's say your total supply was 74. I'd be like, probably just make like one more overlord because you're about to, you're about, you're, you're like already within the 20 range because 58, 68, 78, 74 is not 78. So probably make another overlord like now. If you're, uh, if you were at uh, 82, I'd be like, yeah, you're good for now. You can make another round of drones before you make an overlord. But then as soon as you go above 62, probably squeeze another overlord oh, out because yeah. you're making units at a rate of about 15, 16 supply every 30 seconds. So keep a supply cushion that is gonna re resemble that. This this only again, people who think overlord is hard. You have to realize, and droning is hard. You guys have to realize something. It only applies to early game. It does not apply to all game. Once you have 60, 70, 80 drones, you could literally fucking make seven overlords at once and be like, whoops, and it's not going to fuck you over that hard. It's not great, but it's also not the end of the world. You have so much more money to work with at that point that your money is coming in so fast that you can, you're also going to max out much faster at that point too, because you have more larva to work with. The more resources you have to work with, the better. But 
when you're in the stage where you're developing your resources to be able to work with something, you have to be very, very, very good about managing it properly. And if you, and, there, and the, the big thing is, is there's really no reason to not be able to manage it because nothing's really happening in the early game. Unless your opponent is doing like a one base all in, there's no real reason why your larva should just be so sloppy. And again, Van Buren, I know I'm picking on you specifically because this is your replay, but this applies to everybody. This is like a problem everybody has and everyone's so confused about this. But macro is, if you just think about it in the terms of like efficiency, which is what I'm trying, I hope I'm doing a good job of explaining it right now. But uh, if you just think about it in the terms of efficiency, you only have to be efficient, I'm not even kidding, for the first six minutes of the game and you're fucking done for the most part. Efficiency stage of the game is over and now it's mid game. You've now successfully made it to mid game and the letter grade you got on going into mid game is not a fucking D minus or like a C plus or some shit. It's like a A plus or like, like good job. You were very efficient. Like this is a super effective build now. You know what I mean? Like it, it has to be efficient. Uh, otherwise if you go into the fucking mid game with like a fucking D minus efficiency of a macro opener, the rest of the game is going to be like, holy fuck, I don't have the tools I need to, to deal with this. Like, it feels so hard. Time is everything in StarCraft 2, and the longer you waste time like this, the more hard the game feels. <coughs> Yo, Larissa, Hannah, what's up? Thank you very much for the raid. I'm doing a replay analysis right now, but hello, guys. Hannah, how you doing? Hope you had a good stream. Much love. All right, now, so I, I really hit, I really drilled this fucking larva thing to death at this point, and I feel like at, at this point, you should understand, and just know this, okay? For a super standard build for Diamond League, okay, for Diamond League, <clears throat> I would say if you can be at 66 drones at six minutes, your build is all right. It's, it's definitely not bad. 66 by six minutes, that's respectable. We'll see where you're at at six minutes, but uh, just keep in mind that that is a very respectable thing. You could totally get Masters League. You could even get GM being able to hit that number. Just just so you know, 66 by six minutes. That's a nice quota. You could do it much faster than that though. But you could you could actually hit honestly like 66 drones by like 5:30 if you're fucking cranking like crazy. Uh, why is it that you hit S sometimes? Does it select all larva? Like if I have five larva, it hit S, it brings up like three. Then I have to do it again. Why does that happen? It's, okay, so if you hit S, uh, if you hit S on your hatcheries, it selects all the hatcheries of larva that are currently selected. So if you ever don't select all your larva, it might mean you either don't have all your hatcheries hockeyed. That is one reason why that could happen. It's a very basic one. It's like, is your monitor plugged in or not? Or your, is your computer plugged in? That's one of those situations. It's a super simple answer to that. Another answer would be, you might have hit S right before a larva spawned because it's spawning constantly the entire time, either through an inject popping off your hatchery or through an automated <laughs> larva popped out of your hatchery. Because again, it's not, it doesn't select future larva. It selects existing larva, which is why I tell you it's so important to hit S, 5S, 5S, or 4SD, 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 4SD. Why are you doing that? You're repetitively telling the command to happen again and again and again because it doesn't just, like if you hit S, and you have five larvae selected, and two more just spawned one second after you hit S, it's not going to go, oh, let's just go ahead and grab those two as well. It's just going to never select them until you re-go 4SD. So you have to repetitively do it to grab it as it spawns every time. You have to be very on top of that. Uh, and yeah, that's really the, the other thing that could be happening to you. Um, another, another thing that's huge... Overlord number one, your scout was fine. Overlord number two, I don't mind it if your overlord goes to the back of his base. I actually think it's good. So you can get a nice scout into his base and see what tech he's going for. Stuff like that. Get a nice read. Overlord number three, four. This is fucking terrible where you put them. And uh, overlord number five and six. This is also terrible where you put them. This is what it should be, okay? Overlord one and two can go... Like overlord one, go to his base right away. Overlord two... Sit at your base just for a second. In my, I like this a lot. It's so good for ladder. Sit at your base just for a sec and see if he's all in you. 
because you'll see a fucking SCV like come over here and build a bunker or something, or you'll see a probe come over here and build a cannon, or you'll see Zerglings running across your Overlord if your opponent decided to go around the map really awkwardly with the 12 pool, and now he runs by your second Overlord before your hatchery is done. So you'll see, oh, cool, I, I can spot weird fucking all-ins and, and timings. As soon as your hatchery is done, Overlord 2 can go across the map. And another a, a nice little memory timing to go to send Overlord 2 across the map would be, as soon as you make Overlord 3, remember, okay, now I, that's also exactly when I make Overlord 2 go across the map. I think it's great for ladder, personally. Uh, you If you really don't want to fucking do that, though, and you're like, no, Vibe, it's, it's making it too complicated... Just send Overlord 2 across the map then. That'd be totally fine. Overlords 1 and 2 do eventually need to go across the map. Overlord 3, 4, and 5 need to go here. Overlord 3, go here. Why here? It's the center of your base and the front of your base. Overlord 4 and 5 are interchangeable. Either go here with 4 or 5 and either go here with 4 or 5. And why is this important? This is important because... You can have vision that creep will eventually give you, but first overlords can give you right now that will spot where Hellions come from. So your Queens are not all the way over here when Hellions are all the way over here. If you had overlords and the right spot, you would have seen Hellions sitting right there. Let's see how long you would have had to react if you had an overlord. If you had an overlord sitting right there, okay? Right out here. It would give you vision that is about this wide. So let's see when the Hellions come into this vision box. And we'll look at the timer. And we'll look at where your queens are too. <clears throat> you would have seen him around 4.30. 4.30. And you go, oh, cool. He's got Hellions coming to my base at 4.30. So you could have grabbed your, your new queen. Like the queens, because again, you need to, if you do a third base build like this, you need to build enough queens to not only be able to still inject, but also have your queens in the front of your base to deny Hellions, because if you don't deny Hellions, you're just going to lose all the time to turn anyways. Like, letting them just kill drones is not what you want to do. So, okay, the Hellions are out here. My Overlord spotted it. I have from 4.30 to however long you, he hits you, until he hits you. But if you really think about it, how long would it take you to get this queen, this queen, and this queen grouped up in the front of your base? I think it would probably only take you about five seconds. This queen is already there, so it's good. This queen and this queen, I bet it would take about five, maybe six seconds to go from there to there. So six seconds is very, very realistic. Six seconds for this queen to go from there to there. A full screen length of walking. Six seconds. Super realistic. Now, do these Hellions kill your drones before six seconds from now? No. Your queens could be grouped up right now, right here. And now you could be like right there with all your queens right now. And you could now be approaching the edge of your ramp with your creep on the edge of your creep. And you could poke the Hillion up the top of the ramp and get free damage on them because Hellions can't regenerate. So every time you poke the Hillions, you make them weaker and weaker and weaker. So that if they do eventually dive into your base, they die faster because they're just lower health now. And you could also force a creep spread because you make his Hellions leave the area. You actually had a lot of time to react to this. You had about 13 seconds to react to this because he did not actually drive at your hatchery until 4.30 is when you would have spotted him and 4.43 is when he's finally getting into scary territory. And if he had three queens sitting here right there as he went up the ramp, you could have practically almost killed one Hillian as he tried to drive by. And this is when, I would say, your lings would catch... If he wants to just go fucking YOLO and he drives past your queens... Lings should be down here and you catch him as he tries to drive past your queens and your lings just get in his face and stuff in a fucking like a wall in his face while your queens keep fucking beating on him and your lings now start beating on him too and ideally if he rushes your base like this you have enough lings and queens to kill him and you're good to go I would say as well you made a little bit too many or uh, sorry a little bit too few lings you need a little bit more than this you have seven and one of them is also scouting so you really have six defending you should honestly have about double that. You should have like 12 lings defending your base. And you should be making 12 lings. You should make about 4 lings for the Reaper right away when the pool's done. And then you should make up to about 12, maybe 14 lings in total when your speed's done. So when your speed is like at, let, let's say like 90% of completion. If Once you notice it, it could be at 80%. It could be at 90%. It could be when it just finishes. Just try to do it. 
try to remember to do it around that time. Don't do it right away. With Don't make 14 lings instead of four right away. Do not do that. That's super fucking inefficient again for your drones. Just try to make an extra like roughly 10 lings or so. Eight to 10 lings or so. So you're around 12 or 14. So that when this happens, if you actually did have 12 lings here or 14 lings here, if he drove past your three queens and he ran into 14 lings, you would fucking kill all these hellions before any of your drones died. Guaranteed. Easy peasy. I always make 12 links, so I have a total of 16. 16 is fine. 16 is fine. 16, I would say, is the top end of what's okay. But, like, right there, you just lost 10 drones. And not only that, you made links. Here's the crazy thing. This is where a lot of Zerg players go, oh, shit, I didn't think about it like this. You made links anyways. You made the Zerglings anyways. But you made them after your drones died. If you made the lings before your drones died, you would have the lings regardless, but your drones would still be alive. So instead of having 10 dead drones, you would have had 6 alive drones. Does that make sense? And you would still have the same lings you have, or you the same lings you had, you would have had anyways, but all these new lings you made could have been new drones. Because you're just wasting larva, essentially. Because if you make 10 drones and you lose 10 drones, when that could have been 6 drones and 8 lings, because it's 4 larva is 8 lings, you, you could have had enough lings to deny this in the first place and kill the hellions. And then after you kill the hellions, you know what that opens up? A drone window and all your new larva that you made lings into could have been new drones. So 6 drones instead of 10 initially seems worse, right? But it turns into... 16 drones because you make another 10 fucking drones afterwards whereas 10 drones initially turns into zero drones which turns into 16 lings or so or like 10 lings and then you remake drones after so it's just inefficient again so covering your like this is why i say as well spawning spreading that creep initially at your to your third base makes it to where your creep also could ideally be down here by five minutes, your creep should definitely be a full screen length ahead of your third. Uh. And the number, I, remember the number I quoted you? 66 by 6 minutes. 66 by 6 minutes. You are at 45 at 6 minutes. And even if you didn't even lose those 10 drones you just lost, you'd be at 55, which is still not good. There is no real reason. This guy did nothing out of the ordinary where I, was, where I would tell you, dude, this guy did something creative and he totally fucking got you. Like, I, 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 yeah. Super impossible to defend. Obviously, no. That's not the case here. He did the most standard Terran shit ever. He showed you a bunker with a barracks... Or a bunker, like a barracks bunker command center opener. And then he drove Hellions at your overlord. Before he, your, his Viking killed your overlord. Like you knew for such a long time that it was a Hellion opener. And then he drove Hellions at your third base and killed your drones because you just didn't have any vision. So this guy did nothing out of the ordinary. It's just that you had no steps and engagement in order for yourself to defend it. And all the things we've talked to up to this point, if you do all of that, people who play exactly like this, you would fucking destroy them. And right now, your entire supply would be just drones and your supply would actually be around 80 or like 85 already. And also spine crawlers and every base right now, you don't need this. I would say this. But now let's go back to your, like so the spine crawlers is a lack of just Hellion understanding and a lack of Hellion defense. You don't fucking need spines to deal with Hellions. You do not. If it's gonna be hell bats and you're afraid of that, make a bailing nest or make a roach warren. If it's like just you can add that into your build by default, that'd be even better than this. Uh, even if you don't know it's gonna be hell bats. But if it's gonna be like a straight up standard Hellion harassment. 
Ling and Queen is all you need. And you don't need static D like this. Like this is too much, way too much fucking static D. Now let's go back and look at your scouting for a sec and check this out. So you knew he opened up with one Rax command. You knew that already. And now you're getting into his base with a speed overlord at 520. And you see a command center with two gases. You see a Viking that's still here defensively killing overlords. You see one starport with a fusion core. And your overlord died. Now I would say this. Immediately get a Zergling across the map and see if he's taking a third command center because you did not see the front of his base. You don't know if he's got a third command center going down or not. Like you just don't. Also, it wouldn't be a bad idea to send a second overlord in around six minutes into his base if you can you can send an overseer even if you wanted to just to see if the terran's going for bio or mech and you can see after the overlord scouted and died he immediately made a third command center which tells you this is not an all-in this tells you this is more macro oriented so if you ever spot that third command center that's huge and i would i would say this if i were you seeing a third command center go down go down at 540 would make me feel super good because this is definitely not greedy. This is honestly in the more safe side of standard. This is kind of how, like, I would say Third Commander de definitely does get a bit delayed, though. If the Terran waits for the BC first and then makes the Command Center, this is even, even for a BC build, though, this is even kind of delayed. This is pretty late. That's a super late third. But you don't need to make two spores per base because it's one BC. All you need to do to fix your build. And this is so much better. Just make more queens. Instead of making three spores, like uh, two spores per base, make one one spore per base is totally fine. I only think it's justified to make multiple spores per base if you literally see double fucking starport. And it's like, oh god, this guy's literally making nothing but BCs. But the fact that he's making widow mines, the fact that he made a Viking, this is not double starport. Like, that's too much gas. Like, this is gas already going into things that are not Battlecruiser. So if he went double port BC, he's not really going to be able to... Or, like, either that or you would have saw this gas start super early. Like, he would have taken this gas, like, right as the command center finished if he was going to make these gas units and also go double port BC and to be able to afford double BC. It's way too fucking expensive. Can I BC hit before five minutes? Definitely no. A BC cannot hit you until about six minutes plus. The build time it takes to go depot, barracks, factory, starport, fusion core, BC, that is not sub five minutes. Like fastest BC you could make would be like probably 530. And you can already guarantee it's not fastest BC you can make because of one reason. You scouted a natural. So that means he didn't just go fucking gas, depot, Barracks, Insta Factory, Insta Starport, Insta Fusion Core, Insta BC. Because he would have needed to open like double gas right away to afford that, which means he could not afford a fucking command center at early game when your first overlook gets across the map. So this is not double BC. This is 1 BC, 6 plus is what this is. Because it's standard. It's actually delayed standard, but it's standard. So BC is very late. This BC is not going to hit until like fucking 6.30. Uh, but if there was more queens, we're talking like nine queens, okay? Like seven to nine queens. So we have one queen per hatchery, and we have four or six queens roaming. And if you have one spore crawler per, the, per mineral line, and he teleports to any one of your bases, you could just go, hey, drones, back off for a second. Like, you could literally go like this. Drones, right-click, hold shift, right-click. It's that simple. And now your drones are automatically going to leave their hatchery, uh, the mineral line, they're going to run away for about three seconds and then it's going to buy your queen's time to come in and smack the BC and your spore. If he chases your drones, he'll drive over the fucking spore crawler and get smacked by a spore a lot and you can go right back and then hit the fucking BC with your queens. And if he just chases your drones nonstop and he just wants to chase the drones, you could just reselect the drones again and go, hey, drones, right click my third base, shift right click my mineral line at my natural or whatever. Because, again, I'm, I'm accounting for the fact that you guys probably don't have fucking 400 APM, so you can't just always do everything at every second. So give yourself, you can give yourself assist tasks where you set up for things for the future. 
And then if he dives your drones all the way to your third, your queens will definitely be there in timer or whatever base he goes to. Your queens then have like now 15 seconds to get there in place and you could definitely smack him out of your base and kill him. Just too much static D is fucking bad. It's so bad. It's not warranted. Because again, I can't stress the fact enough that your first six minutes of this game, being at 45 drones at six minutes, that is unacceptably bad. That is unacceptably low. I am now, I am not going to, so I know we've taken an hour, guys. I know we've taken an hour to get to this point. I understand. If you're still with me, fucking props, dude. But I can't tell you, this, this is why I took this long to get here. If I was watching you play this game and you were like, hey, Vibe, coach me in person. You want to know what the thought that would be going through my mind? I would think to myself, you've already lost, but we'll continue. Because the game's still... It's still not over. But you should be dead already. Like, you will never advance playing like this. So, like, what's already happened... You should lose for this. Like, you should be dead. Because if you played a better Terran... You would be dead. Like, you'd be so fucking far behind... That this game would be unwinnable at this point. So... The first six minutes of every game you play... In a macro... And it's not even just macro. All ends as well is pretty important... But the first six minutes of a StarCraft 2 game are critically important. And if you derail your build this hard, there's no recovery unless your opponent is just also derailing his build and he's just fucking playing like shit. It's the only way you win from here is if your opponent is also playing like, you know, f super fucking inefficient. So we'll continue from here, but now we'll go a lot faster because I'm. we can talk about concepts now. But this game, the macro is already like... I've already explained very much in detail what I would say needs to be fixed to make this macro better for this game specifically. And like this, this would apply to all games in ZVT as well for Diamond and beyond. But if you can't do the first six minutes like that, at least uh, to a degree where it's even remotely close to it, like we're talking like in the 60 plus range by six minutes, your build is super fucking inefficient. And it means you have glaring fucking holes in your early game that need to be fixed before you worry about late game. Alright, so that guy just threw away his BC. That's nice. So, that now that he threw away the BC, I would say a good thing you can do at this point in the game would be to definitely... If, you're, if your opponent invests into pressure and then loses said units that are pressuring, that is a drone window. So your response to that BC dying 100% should be cranking drones out like crazy. And you're starting to crank drones out, which is good. But look at this, though. This is, this, this is what I'm talking about. You could be at 66 drones by 6 minutes. And you're at 710 and you're at 54. This build is so far behind right now. You just hit 66 drones by like 748. So it, it yeah, it's a uh, it's just it's just when you're behind that far, like there's no recovery really. I just really want to make that really understood because a lot of people think it's not a bit they're like, "Oh, well, five, I'm, I'm, I mean, look at the game, dude. I'm still ahead." And it's like the way I see that is well, that means that you're better than this guy in Diamond League, but you're never going to get beyond out of Diamond League. That's Whenever people look at it that way, because I, I know there's some people out there. I already know there's some people out there that look at it like that. They base the game off of their opponent and not off of the clock. And if you don't base your game off of the clock, it means you're never going to be promoted. You're always going to be settling for crappier play. You're like, oh, well, if my opponent can't really play very well, that means I don't have to play very well. So don't don't be a victim of that mindset because it's very non-productive. All right, so right here, this is what I would say. In your position right now, there are two things you need to do. Number one, you need to scout for his third base. And you just did that, which I think is wonderful. I would love it if you send one drone, at, or not one drone, sorry, one zergling, at the front of his base, just to see what's there. Are you going to get shot by a siege tank? Are you going to get shot by a uh, 
uh, widow mine? Are you not, is nothing going to shoot you? And are you going to see a bunch of bio? Are you going to see a cyclone back there? Are you going to see a fucking Thor? Are you going to see a second BC possibly flying out here right now next to the command center? What are you going to see? That is important because it gives you an idea of what his composition is becoming. Secondly, you need, definitely need to get a fucking overlord into his base. And here's why. Com there's two ways to scout composition of Terran. Number one, what does he actually have at the doorway? What does he actually have in the front of his base like we just talked about? Number two, what buildings is he making? Is he got a lot of factories or does he have a lot of barracks? You don't know either one right now. So right now in your units tab, you have 27 Zerglings. And I would ask you, what do you feel like making right now? And your answer is going to be Zergling, Baneling, Mutalisk, essentially. That's what it looks like you're going to make. And this is a blind choice. And I would tell you, this is probably not going to be the best composition to make if your opponent is going for, hypothetically, Thors and fucking Hellions and Widow Mines. Which is what he's doing. Like, Widow Mines are a fucking god mode against Lingbane Muta. You have to have pristine Muta Micro to counter Widow Mines because you have only a split second to kill the Widow Mine before it goes off. And if you go into multiple Widow Mines, you have to have perfect pullback Micro to not be in range long enough to set them off while you kill the one just barely in range and you have to engage at the right angle every time as well. It's a fucking nightmare. It takes a lot of meticulous movements of your Mutas to make it work. It just basically is a fucking... Uh, it's a very, very, very high APM requiring thing from you that requires like zero APM from your opponent. You're making the game super hard for you when it doesn't have to be. Mutas also aren't that good against Thors, especially if he goes for a lot of Thors. And Lings will just get eaten alive by Hellions. Like, if you have nothing to really engage with your Lings and you're just running over a bunch of Widow Mines into Hellions, your Lings are just going to go... They're like going to be like stampeding forward and then it's just going to be like... Pfft, they're just going to die. Like, all of them are just going to like fall over and die. So, what would I recommend against this? In Diamond League, I would be like... If you know he's going mech, you want to know a composition that's fucking easy for Zerg and hard for Terran to deal with? What if you went, oh, look, he's got a bunch of factories. And he's going for whatever. Mech. How about you just make like 16 Swarm Host and a bunch of Hydralisk. And all you do every fight is you do this. Swarm Host. Shit your Locust out towards his base. Your Locust start flying towards his base. Your Hydras follow your Locust in. Locust land. Start smacking shit. Your Hydras go behind the Locust. Smack shit. Locusts start thinning out. They're almost like they're starting to expire to a point to where like almost all of them are dead. Back up with your Hydras. Come back when your Locust Wave is ready again. That's it. That's all it is. And you know what you would do every fight? You would be like killing a Depot, killing a Depot, killing a Depot, killing four Hellions, killing one Thor, killing three Widow Mines, killing another Depot, killing a fucking tank, killing maybe another Thor. Back off. Maybe you lose like five Hydras while you back off. But, he, but the Terran just lost like 2,500 resources and you lost like 700. Great trade for Zerg. Locusts are up again. Do it again. This time you do it at a planetary. Planetary just fucking insta-dies. And then you kill like maybe five Hellions and you back off. Like it's so much easier to go Stormhost and Hydra against a mech than Ling Bane Muta. Now if this guy was going Bio, I'd be like, yeah, Ling Bane Muta is a little bit better. That's fine. It's effective. It's much more effective against Bio uh, than it is against mech. But if you do, yeah. Uh, Link Bay Muta is just gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard, which is why this game probably is gonna be 30 minutes long, because it's gonna be really messy. Like, right here, for instance. Like, this is also... Here's the other thing, too. This is also not the time to... If you really think about it, like, I would say sending one Zergling at his door, like I said earlier, would be good. You send one Link at his third, which I love, but you send every Zergling at his base, and I know the door is open, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, Open Depot. Let's fucking do it. But realistically... This is never going to work because this would only it would only ever actually work if this was a counterattack. This is not a counterattack. Your opponent's defensive. So all that's going to happen if you look at your production right now is you're going to remake an army. And what's your what's your drone count at? It's not done yet. So you're going to make drone you're going to make another army now in about the next 5 seconds probably and then you're going to make drones again after it. When it would be better if you just sent one link at his door. 
and you don't try to win the game because this is very it's like you have like a one percent chance to win the game right now you know what i mean like this is just never gonna work like how like how would you ever expect to win the game off of a harassment group of lings that are going into your opponent's base while he's defensive right like it's just never gonna work the only way it could work is if somehow this guy was going for bio because you don't know what he's going for and he's got all of his army in like a doom drop right over here and he decided you know what let's leave my depot down while i'm doom dropping and you get in here and kill the middle line probably not going to happen if he's going to doom drop you he's definitely not going to leave a depot open the only time a terran ever leaves their depot open because they're and then you could actually kill their economy is because they have a third base and they're trying to cover multiple bases now but if this guy doesn't have a third which you know he doesn't because you just scouted it twice you scouted it earlier and you scouted it again you reconfirmed it and you've also confirmed there's no third here there's no fucking reason he has his depot open he has it open because it's a trap he's like come into my base and kill kill my SCVs uh -huh. or or watch this and now look at the uh, look at the production I bet you make units now instead of drones which it feels like you probably should right because now you have no control of the game now if this guy were to ca just literally shove across the map you would all your drones would be susceptible to dying because you have four zerglings to your name and you make drones so this is the scary moment where if your opponent decided to take advantage of a mistake like that from you and you just made another another round of drones and suddenly he's fucking here with like a tank right there he sets up another tank right there and he's pushing a mineral line you don't have any army and your hatchery dies and you'll have enough army to defend your other three bases but this base is just forfeit and it dies so you're playing very risky when you do this kind of shit like that. Because you give your opponent confidence to push you when you throw shit away. And you're making Corruptor. I'm not sure why. For the BC? Okay. I'll accept it for the BC. So you're going Ling... I don't know what your composition really is. It looks like it's going to be Ling, Bane, Corruptor, now Hydra. I would honestly say if you're like, again, this is, this is why as well, I would love for you to scout. And I would say in Diamond League, especially and in Masters as well, if you spot your opponent only has one starport and a bunch of factories, you don't need to make a Spire and go Corruptors. You could literally, you can still make a Spire. I'm totally okay with that because if your opponent pushes you with like mass siege tanks, you could just make mutas and win the game. That'd be great because mutas can kill tanks and tanks can't even hit air. But because uh, some Terrans do shit like that, they just push you with like 15 tanks and like 25 Hellions and they have literally no fucking anti-air. Sometimes people do that shit. But uh, I would say if you if you actually knew what he was building and it was just a bunch of factory units with one starport, Hydras could kick the crap out of one BC. You'd be totally fine. And you have two options here. You have the option to go roaches roaches and corruptors or if you're gonna go for hydras i think you should just not even bother making a spire unit because it's just too much gas it's like too much gas to for the purpose of killing the air hydras and corruptors is way overkill And you're getting. Also, I would say Carapace. I don't like it against Mech personally. I, I normally would say always if you go if you go Carapace or if you go, uh, Corruptor Broodlord. Like Carapace is good with Corruptor Broodlord. It's super good. But this would only make sense to go Carapace Corruptors if he was going mass BCs and he's not. And you saw, he's got a bunch of factories. So you have to, th this is where reactive scouting comes in and you go, okay, he's not doing a BC focus. So I shouldn't do a corruptor focus. Like you don't need to do this. This is so fucking expensive on your gas. And you, you want to know what this is actually doing to you? All this is doing to you is it's slowing down your control of the ground to the point to where you're just going to allow this guy to fucking expand all over the place. And then you're going to allow the Terran to fortify himself on his side of the map. And it's going to be so much harder to deal with him now.
You're just wasting time, essentially. And Carapace for ground as well is kind of pointless here. For If you're fighting against mech, Carapace on the ground doesn't do shit. Oh, I'm not even kidding. Okay. So, again, you're doing two styles at once. You're doing a Hydra style with Lings and doing a Roach style with Corruptors. You can't do every style at once. If your if your styles would have had just Roach Corruptor there, or if it was like Hydra Ling Bane or something like that, because you also have a Bane Nest too. Did you get Bane Speed as well? You did. If you would have done either Hydra Ling Bane and fully focused on it, your Hydras could have easily killed the BC. Your Ling Bane could have ravaged his fucking Mineral Lines as long as you didn't run into these massive Widow Mine hits. And you could have done a lot more damage there. He probably would have killed the third. Or if you went Roach Corruptor, your Corruptor could have overpowered the BC. And then your Roaches would have just overrun everything. Kind of like what just happened to it. Almost, you almost overpowered him there. But you did both styles together. You made a Hydra, Ling, Corruptor, Roach. And you got upgrades for Roaches, for Banelings, for Corruptors, for Hydras. Not only for the, the actual upgrades for those units specifically, like movement speed and shit like that, but you also got upgrades in form of like weapon and carapace. You have so much fucking gas going all over the place that your army is just tiny. So your attack when you attacked him at 11 minutes was fucking like, how much supply did you have? You have 140 supply. You have 140 supply at 10.30. You could be maxed out at like 9.30. And again, I know this is Diamond League. I know this is Diamond League, but a 9.30 max out is fucking fair. You could max out at 8.30 if you have good droning at the start of the game. Look at your money right now. You could make so many fucking roaches out of this. And imagine if you weren't getting Hydras. Imagine if you weren't going Bane Speed. Imagine if you weren't going for these upgrades. Imagine if you weren't getting uh, fucking Carapace upgrade. Imagine if all you were doing was getting plus... Imagine if you were getting this Carapace upgrade. Imagine if it was just plus one weapons on Roaches, Speed for Roaches, Mass Roaches, and like eight Corruptors. Because all you saw was one Starport and one BC. You would crush. You would have a maxed army super fast and you would run his ass over. <laughs> and now you're going into Roach Hydra and you're going Lurkers. I feel like you need to um, pick a style and kind of stick with it a bit more. Uh, the fact that you all, like when you keep bouncing your tech and into literally everything, you are going every tech path. Like, you, you're you just investing so much gas, so much gas, so much gas, so much gas all over the place every time. You're weakening your timings every time you do this because you're never attacking him with a maxed army and you're putting oh, so much fucking money. Yeah. But yeah, but look at my money. Isn't it like whatever? No. Van Buren, you have the wrong mindset. You, you are, like, you're doing the exact thing I said that people in, uh, in Diamond League make. I'll, I'll say it one more time because I really want... This is something you need to uh, understand. I tell you your build is bad. And you tell me... But Vibe, I'm ahead in supply. And I tell you... It doesn't matter if you're ahead in supply because your opponent is playing like shit. If you were playing a good Terran who's Masters or something, you would be fucking destroyed playing like this. You shouldn't be playing the game based off of the game itself where you base the game off your opponent you should be playing the game based off of the timer 
because time is the only relative resource that actually measures skill in StarCraft. It's like saying this. It's like saying this. If I have to fight a fucking, like, world-class MMA fighter, and he kicks the shit out of me, he's probably one of the best fighters in the world because he's world-class, and that's a real representation of what I'm trying to strive for. That's, like, competitive. I'm trying to get better. So he's, like, a good measurement of what's fucking good. But if I go outside and I fight a seven-year-old, and I kick the seven-year-old in the stomach, and they fall over, and I go, I fucking won that fight, that's not a measurement of skill. At all. And that's exactly what's happening here in this fucking game. Neither one of you is playing efficient and good. So saying that you're playing better than this guy doesn't mean you're playing good. It just means you're able to beat someone else who's not playing well. That's about the most blunt, realistic way I could put it there. And I don't... Vibes beating up kids again. You get the point, though. It's like... This is not acceptable, dude. Like, if you want to improve again, like, because I'm trying to help the, the help uh, Van Buren improve at StarCraft, right? And thinking that this game is going well is definitely not fucking the case at all. This game is so off bait, uh, off point. You have to get the tough love, Van Buren. <laughs> I love Van, Van Buren. I fucking love you, man. Okay, I will give you a hug. Okay? Don't cry. Okay, don't cry. Just I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> Use the fucking timer. You gotta use the timer. You're, you're, max, you're not even maxed and it's almost 12 minutes. This is fucking not great. I, wanna, I just want to throw it out there really fast and just say this. See how close these fights are? Do you see how close these fights are? Where you're like, damn, he's got two Thors. He's got two Thors, and I've got five Hydras. Five Hydras is 10 supply. Right now, you are 72 supply from max. That is 36 fucking Hydras. Or 36 more Roaches. And if you had that many fucking Roaches and Hydras in this fight right now, you would fucking insta win the game. God damn, I would cry. Hey, he paid for this. He paid for this abuse. <laughs> I fucking Van Buren, you let me know if I'm being too 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 uh, extreme here. I'm just trying to help you. I'm not trying to give you a fucking participation ribbon here. I'm trying to actually make you a better player. But if I'm fucking being too mean, I'll tone it back a bit because <laughs> I don't want to be mean. Obviously, I'm just trying to help you get better at StarCraft. <laughs> I love you, man. If you coach me like that, I'll cry. I'll be nice. I'll be nice. <laughs> this is this is real shit, though. Okay, if you just know, if you want to get better as fast as possible, you need to be able to take a beating in terms of uh, a verbal beating, because it's the only thing that's gonna really prove the point that you're playing like shit. Guys, even I play like shit. If I coached myself, I would be cr fucking critical of everything. I play terrible as well. I know a lot about this game, and I know I play like shit as well, and I would even berate myself with insults about how bad I play. And do I expect you to do everything I'm saying perfectly? Fuck no. But I expect you to do better than you are. Like, if you're doing only 25% of what I'm saying, if you can get to, like, now 50% of what I'm saying, suddenly you're Master's League. If you can get to 75% of what I'm saying, suddenly you're GM. The game, only the only people that can play perfect like I'm telling you to is a fucking pro gamer. And I don't expect anyone to be a pro gamer. It's just, if you understand that's what you should aim for, it means you can always improve. You should never be complacent and be like, but Vibe, I'm already playing pretty good, right? No, that's a bad mindset. If you think you're already playing good, it means you're never going to improve. If you want to improve. If you want to improve, you're never going to. If you if you get complacent, <laughs> if you go through like that, I'll cry. <laughs> I'll be super nice.
All right, and uh, let's speed it up again. Because at this point now, you have the right idea. The idea you, that you have is you're going to deny expansions from Terran. This is a great way to fuck over mech. But I'm telling you right now, if you just used Swarmhost, this game would be so fucking easy. This guy's army is so small, you would wreck, you would wreck his ass with Swarmhost. But you have this, now you're going for mass mutas. You're doing such a elaborate composition of Lurker, Muta, Ling, Roach, Hydra. Your composition is so fucking extreme. It doesn't need to be this hard. Just make Swarmhost and never let him expand and keep breaking his expansions down that exist with Swarmhost. <coughs> Basically, you want to know what it's like? This is what it's like. Eat, let's just say this. This this is... Okay, I want you guys to understand the concept of Swarmhost. This is serious business right here. I, I, if you guys understand this, this would be amazing. I'll explain it in the most simple way to understand. If this... If, this, if, if each base on StarCraft 2 represents a, the, the number 15, and that's 15 represents the number of total resources at the base, okay? I'm making it super simple. So the main base is worth 15. Natural base is worth 15. Third base is worth 15. Every time you send Swarmhost at the Terran and back it up with some Hydras and do damage and then pull back when your Swarmhost expire so your Hydras don't all die as well, you delete one from the Terran. So every Swarmhost wave, delete one. So now Terran has an, a, up, an up to of 45 amount of resource. And every time you do a Swarmhost wave, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38. And if you just don't ever let him expand, because every time the Terran tries to expand, you go Swarmhost. And it's like, oh, well, my command center just died because it fucking died to Locust, or I lifted it off and it died to Hydra's. And the Terran is stuck on 45 because you don't let him take a fourth base because that would take him to 60. The Terran is on a clock where he will eventually die. And each time you hit him, it hits him harder and harder because your supply stays maxed. And if you can actually get to a point where you don't let the Terran max out anymore, the Terran is actually at like 160 supply with no bank because he's losing shit as he's building it. It fucking dies the swarm host. And he's trying to build new versions of it again. Repeatedly. But you keep killing it. So he doesn't even ever have time to get to maxed out supply. Suddenly now it goes from 39, 38, 37, 36, 34, 32, 30, 28, 26, 22, 18, 14, 10. Does that make sense? Like... The lower his supply gets and the faster he's going to bleed himself out because you're going to kill more shit over every time and he's going to have to start doing things like not only rebuilding a Thor or two Thors, he'll have to rebuild fucking because he has like, it's like one or two Thors die out of 12 Thors. Now it's like three Thors or four Thors are dying out of a total of six Thors because he has less supply and you're also now killing like four depots. Jesus, you're killing like four supply depots at the same time. Because you're actually killing buildings as well, since his army's getting thinned out so hard. Like, you do more damage over time, the more starved you can make the Terran. And if you never let him take a fourth base, once that number gets down to below 10, the Terran's income on this gra little grid right here, a graph, whatever, income chart, Terran's income would be like 400 gas and like 900 minerals, and yours is like 3,000 and 2,000. And he can never keep up with you like that. He can never keep up with you like that. He just fucking dies. Swarmhost is so good against mech, and I don't know why everyone tries to do shit like this. That's super hard to do. This is, again, this is like doing, like, remember how I talked about math problems where I was like, what's 2 plus 2? 4? Correct. Okay, well, what's another way we can get to 2 plus 2? Let's do 2 to the second power times 10. Then we're going to fucking divide that by 17, take the square root of that, and then we're going to multiply that again by, by 6.334, and then we're going to fucking divide that by 5 again. And then we'll plus 15 minus fucking uh, the square root of 5. Uh, there you go. There's where we are. Like, people like to fucking make the game super complicated. Why the hell do we have a diamond guy going for Lurker, Muta, Corruptor, Hydra Lurker, Ling, Roach? It's so fucking... Greater Spire now? 
It's just so complicated. Getting every upgrade in the game. <laughs> it's You're taking an easy to solve situation and just over complicating it. And you see what just happened there? All the lurkers walked in and killed a fucking donut. They killed zero. And there was like 10 lurkers that just died for that. Because they walked into a bunch of tanks, sieged and do turret ra radius of detection, and then died when they only attacked once and then they all were dead. And then imagine if that was just Swarmos, right? Like, you just fucking send it to him and suddenly you just kill a bunch of stuff. So it's, uh... It's just not, yeah, it's just overcomplicating the game. I forgot some of us existed. Yeah, sure. Well, you should, you should definitely try them against mech. They're so good. Super efficient. Super good. And now there's a composition of like, again, it's like Lurker, Corruptor, Viper, Hydra, Muta, Ling. Uh, it's just like, I, I feel like every time, you know what, you know what happens? I feel like every time the fight happens, this is probably what's happening. Like, it's like the fight starts and it's like... When this is the, the setup of the fight happens, it's like... And then when the fight starts happening, it's kind of like... Blood is everywhere. I don't know what just happened. Because <laughs> I can guarantee before the fight happens, you feel like you're kind of able to control the units because you're moving them around. And you're like, I might be, okay, I'm going to try and set up the fight. But the second the fight happens, your fucking brain just splatters against the wall. And you're like, holy fuck, I have to have like 500 APM just to even handle what's happening right now. This is super hard. And then you, your brain just fucking, that's when the splatter happens and you're like, and everything's dead. All right, let's try again. <laughs> it's unrealistic. Super complicated. But if you can, then every time fights like that happen too, it just allows the Terran to take more bases. I'm glad you're killing bases right now. That's good. This is a little cute attack you have going on here, but Thors are going to definitely wreck the shit out of your broods. No problem. And they're all dead now. So broods are definitely an expired unit. They don't really, they're, they're kind of bad in ZVT now. Also, Lurkers are good if you can handle Lurker, but Lurker I would say is like Masters level. Lurker is definitely Masters for proper execution because lurker doesn't work unless you have viper and now you have you know you have viper but again this is super difficult <laughs> you should definitely be killing bases though i would say this the fact that you've made the command center lift off and you do not want to engage that you only have two choices one you don't ever run into his army. If you want to engage his army, you blinding cloud or you fucking... If you want to run into it. Or you just abduct him into you. Fucking abduct his ass back towards you and pick off his units. But an even better thing to do, I would say, is once you killed this base and once you denied this base... Also, look at this base. Is it really worth continuing to focus and deny? It's got one little tiny patch at it. This base is practically depleted. You should be killing this base. And if you actually had him over here for a second and he's sieged and everything and you pull back and you immediately disengage and go this way and go up this way, you could kill this base guaranteed. Like, what does this base actually have at it? Nothing. It is just a naked planetary. And you know what happens if you kill this base entirely? 15 pff, off right away. Future resources just deleted. Look at the main base. Nothing. Look at the natural. Nothing. Look at the third base. Well, this is really the third base basically nothing look at the fourth base getting kind of low this guy's economy would suck really bad if you killed this base and then proceeded then to deny future bases again Depleted. Uh, you keep making units that are just super complicated. I like that you killed this base. That was good. That This is losing you the game. 
It's cute. It feels like it might be doing well, but it's losing you the game, I would say. Because it's such an investment, and you keep losing more than it's worth. This just won you the game. That's all you had to do to win the game premiere. Because there's been enough trades that have happened so far to where this Terran is now starved. Remember that economy thing I was talking about? Look at it. If you just contain the Terran on whatever bases they're on, they can't build shit. And now the Terran's super dead because he he knows he's dead. And he's just going to go all in now. So the game's over. Because, I mean, he doesn't have he doesn't have anywhere near your bank. And he doesn't have any way to replace what he's going to lose. And you're already winning in supply as it is. So you've clearly won the game. Well, yeah, you just gotta really, uh... I would say you, you're already playing this style, and that's fine. I would say you can come back to this style once you can actually, um, control the game better. I think you put too much emphasis... Like, honestly, I'll even say this. You could... I, I think that your composition is the less... Of your problem okay I want you to realize there's a reason why I just went from minute 6 to minute 34 in about 30 minutes and I went from minute 1 to minute 6 in about an hour and the reason why is because if you really want to um, Vambirin if you want to go if you want to play a lurker Hydra Viper style against Terran that's fine I actually don't give a shit I think you I think you can actually from what I've seen here you can play it decently enough to make it work. You'll get better at it over time. And I think the style is, is viable overall. It is a viable st uh, style. I think the one thing you need to be better about, though, is in, is in your initial mid-game. you got to be a little bit more assertive about what the fuck you're going to go for. Like, your first timing you're going to hit someone with should not be four different timings mixed together. It should be, like, a uh, timing. Like, Roach Corruptor, Ling Hydra Bane, Mass just Roaches, fucking just straight up Mass Ling Bane whatever the fuck you're going to do, commit to it. Don't go, I'm going to make some Ling Bane and then I'm going to also make some fucking Roaches and then I'm going to make some Corruptors and then I'm going to make some Hydras and then I'm going to also make a Lurker Den and then I'm going to make a couple Lurkers and then now I'm going to go attack him at 140 supply. Like, that's fucking not good. You need to be a lot more assertive about how you set a timing up and, like, go. And then you can, after you do your timing, then you can switch into diversity but you don't go diversity and then attack because that is that that is not a timing the more time you waste makes the timing you're doing more irrelevant so if you could do a timing at nine minutes and instead you're going to do a timing at 10 minutes and 30 seconds because you wanted to have every fucking tech path of it as well while you did it your timing is over and you've missed it <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the first six minutes are huge. Definitely, dude, definitely fix the first six minutes of your game. 100% fix that, and you're going to have such stronger games. Your mid game and your late game is weak as fuck because your early game is weak. Thanks for being a good sport, Van Buren. Van Buren, yeah, good job, dude. I appreciate you. I know I, sometimes I'm brutal when I do these, but I'm just trying to give good information because I'm trying to make sure people know that, like, I'm not like, oh, wow, the very nice play here because I'm telling you right now. If you play like... I, I will, I'll tell you this right now, okay? This is this is the final fact I'll end it on. Van Buren, if I played you with my Terran, with my Terran, and you played like you did this game... I would have a 100% win rate against you. Guaranteed. But if you played against a better Terran than what this guy was, it would force you to make less mistakes because mistakes would make you lose the game. And you would eventually get, you would actually get better over time because of that because you would start to learn, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. I have to be more assertive here. I have to be more efficient because I just die otherwise. And if you could actually get to the first six minutes of the game at a really efficient pace... If you got to that point, I would say, okay, well now 
I no longer have a 100% win rate against you. Now, it's really kind of up in the air based on how good your late game composition and decision and, and decision making is. But it's definitely not 100% anymore. Now maybe it's like 75% or 80% because maybe I still have way better decision making than you. And maybe you get that better and now suddenly it's like 50-50. You know what I mean? But like if you have a weak early game, you'll never fucking beat someone who's efficient. It's all it takes is if someone is efficient, they will always beat someone who is inefficient. That is the simple rule of StarCraft. That's why everybody says macro. How do I get out of this league? How do I get out of that league? You fucking macro. Because that is the, another word for efficiency. An inefficient build will never fucking beat an efficient build. Ever. It's very rare. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. There's too much shit. That, there's too many factors in this game that apply. And if your build's inefficient, it makes everything else you do pretty irrelevant. Like, you could have great micro and horrible macro and you would lose because your macro sucks. But anyways, I hope this makes sense. Van Buren, I love you, man. Thank you very much for submitting this. I know I ripped into you a lot this and this one. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you learned a lot from it, though. And I hope you didn't take it personal or anything. Uh, I just... I, I really feel like the, the Care Bear approach, though, is just... It's such weak information sometimes where if I, if, if, cause imagine if I, if all I would have given you out of this game would have been like this, just make sure you spend your larva a little bit better in the early game. Otherwise, good job. Well done, dude. You're doing great. You definitely, you got, you got good creep spread. You got good, uh, expansions. You're definitely, I mean, look at your supply. It's better than your opponent. Like if I told you shit like that, you'd be like, oh, so I don't need to improve then. <laughs> but again, your opponent, I think your opponent is worse than you. And I think that's why you won this game. But I think that you have a lot to improve on uh, for the things we talked about. And uh, they're very doable. It's very, very doable to improve on the things that I said. Just take it in strides. I don't expect you to do it all in like one game, nor should you. Just work on one thing at a time and like really get it down. Like what, do you, what I think you should work on right now is not wasting your larva. That is actually number one, number one for you. Get your larva more efficient, especially in the first six minutes of the game. And you'll have such stronger mid games. Like the game won't go for 35 minutes because you'll kill them at eight minutes with the timing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, dude? You know what I'm saying, man? Anyways, I, uh, I appreciate it. Van Buren, much love. Shout out to you, man, for doing it. I, uh, I hope you guys all learned something from this. I hope it helps with the information we threw out there. And uh, just know... Yeah, I, I, the reason why I'm so hard on people is because I feel like it just makes them better uh, for the information that I can provide. But thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, you know, take it easy. <laughs> Much love. And uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.